Okay, so it's another session for Houdini, and we're gonna be dealing with attributes. We're gonna be messing with a lot of attributes. So let's go ahead and get jiggy with this. Let's <coughs> burn this thing up and let's um burn this thing up. Let's go. Let's do this. Cheer. Okay, so we're beginning to hold this session by actually well dropping our first um swap which will be the font sub we're gonna be doing with mainly point attributes well a little bit of prop, uh, primitive and point attributes but mostly point attributes so um, the font is what we're gonna be using in our case you could use a curve or you could use a square I mean a grid and extracted points however you want to do it it's up to you but uh, I'll just use a, a font over here we'll use an example of maybe a logo that you might create one day so let's say ILM and please don't be don't bring up no copyright issues cause the letters ILM existed before ILM actually came up so I'm just using ILM as an example we could use anything now it's gonna be totally up to you how you wanna do this so I don't know for one we're gonna need some extra nodes well, I'm gonna just begin by dropping a transform so you can flip this thing up. I wanna make it uh, kind of like um, rotating the X over here to negative 90 to make it lie flat. And I think I'm gonna go back over here and increase the scale from over here, making something big, something bigger, and probably increase the spacing in between them by increasing the conning over here, the conning in X. Then well, I'm gonna go ahead and drop me my grid as of right now, which uh, is gonna. Oops, I got caps lock on. That's why it's not popping up. Uh, grid, okay, and um, well, it's gonna be just as big. So well, I'm gonna just probably increase the grid size a little bit. I'll probably increase, reduce the font size a little bit. I'm gonna just okay, so. That should probably be, be good. Now on the transform still, I'm gonna make my phone go a little bit higher up. And since we're gonna be extracting data out of uh, as a curve data, uh, on the font over here, I'm actually let it output primitive type as Bezier only. That means it's just like curves. So if you actually look on the if you move the mouse click, you can see you have three Bezier curves, which is the ILM uh, logo over there. Now. To get the samples, uh, we're gonna resample the whole curve. If I put on the point display over here, you can see that the uh, curves are really not, they don't have any points in between. We need some point data in between that. So if you do a resample, you get the points all in between. And that's actually what you want. And uh, the closer you have the points, the better the resolution. So you might wanna reduce this to something decent. Uh, so probably something like that so I mean Houdini being procedural you really don't have to worry about how the end result is gonna be as of right now but you can pre-plan because you know the more points you have the better detail you have um, as you come to see uh, later on as we go now we're gonna create a we're gonna be creating a pop network in a little bit so actually we're gonna go ahead and drop in the pop net and uh, well, we're gonna need a collision grid eventually. I know that, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the grid into the first port over here, and I'll plug in the uh, resample to the second port over here. I'm gonna dive inside by double clicking, and we're gonna drop in our fast pop, which is the soft pop, sauce node or soft pop. And we're gonna be using points order. This okay? We can we're gonna use the second um, context geometry, and. Um, well, while the logo might work out for you like this, um, well, it's not really going to do for us. So we're going to actually, for one, we're going to bath all the points at the same time. So we're going to use an expression over here, which is a dollar FF is equals to one. So that way all the points get birth at the very same frame, right? And well, you don't want constant activation on. So you want constant activation zero and bath rate zero. So now you have actually no points being born after that. So what you need to use over here under under, under the impulse bath rate, right? impulse means on the very boom get go how many points are gonna be born. Now you can say 50 and you can see where the points are at. Oh that's 450 in our case. And well you can go ahead increasing the number till you get what the you know where the point number should be. 
but uh, instead of doing that you can use a endpoint expression so if you press uh, control shift T if you don't have caps lock on or if you press control T if caps lock is on you're gonna get the um, text editor and uh, over here if you type in X help for n points you get the number it actually queries the number of points on a string surface node which in our case you want to query the number of points which in which the ILM logo has so you can use that or you can use a simple expression which is actually the dollar MPT that will work the same way it will give up the same um, number so in our case we get 1237 points which is the same number of points which you have right here under under we sample uh, node which is the one coming in right into the pop net okay so that's what you're gonna be doing and the attributes over here you can you know you got a lot of stuff that you can bring in but in our case we're gonna be playing with this it's called mass uh, it's already defined as an attribute so really don't have to redefine it in Houdini but um, if you actually go back up over here and right before you actually drop this in and you drop in an attribute transfer or attribute create for that and uh, name it mass Houdini is actually gonna actually automatically link the name to the already predefined attribute which comes in Houdini now the mass you can play around with the mass or just, you know come up with different numbers but in our case Houdini got point numbers if you actually look at them it's uh, now assuming you are depending on how you want to create the effect I really can't say but in our case this is what we're gonna be going for we're gonna use the point numbers as the mass so you can say uh, the dollar PT is equals the point is equals to the point number and if you divide that in our case this will actually work to our kind of effect it's gonna pretty much normalize everything from 0 to 1 depending on how many number of points that you have in our case 1237 so it's gonna normalize the whole point uh, masses for all the points now if you wanna visualize the masses of the points as you have them you can press the D key on the keyboard or you can press the little I over here and you can add uh, uh, an attribute text which in our case we're gonna right click and edit and uh, for one I'm gonna go ahead and uh, delete this guy I don't know where he came from I probably had another session running now then I'm gonna name this guy you can name him anything so you can name him this my mass but over here you have to name the attribute exactly the way you named it over here so you can actually copy that and just paste it and uh, if I can actually copy it and paste it can I even do that copy paste it good all right color not really accept and this my mass and close now our mass as you can see goes from 0 point something to almost 1 wherever the end point is as you can see there's the 0 point uh, you can see it goes almost to 1 right about here I guess and this is the end point so almost close to one so it's normalized everything from zero to one pretty much using the logo and you can see you can also create effects with this huh <laughs> how you think about that anyway now you can actually increase this so you can multiply this you can put the whole thing in brackets and multiply it by two or three whichever number you feel like if that's okay and then we can start visualizing my mass now you got the pop net running you're gonna go ahead dive inside and uh, we're gonna give it a collision.